Dark Eye, based on the works of Edgar Allan Poe. Phrenological study. Study of the bumps on the head. The game is a bit like Operation, but instead you have to determine if someone is a criminal by the bumps on their head. This person has no brain at all. For the wild narrative which I'm about to tell, I neither expect nor ask for belief. It would be mad to expect such a thing, in a case where my own senses reject their evidence. Yet I'm not mad, and I surely do not dream. No, I can see it too. Those leaves are floating by their own accord. Oh, I'm picking your nose, picking your nose. Yeah, I think this game is a bit of a glorified, uh, you know, interactive movie. It's kind of a tour of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's uh, different stories, but it looks pretty cool. I suppose you're the young master Mr. Aldrich waits for. These are Go ahead the, on in. These are the characters. They're um, sort of made out of clay. Um, yeah, kind of remind me a bit of full drama masks, like a, in the one emotion, like this would be the sad face. Okay, as you can see, the walls of the house are actually kind of covered in writing. So it's almost like, you know, a house made out of, uh, Edgar Allan Poe is writing. There's a picture of the raven there. And we get two great writers for one, because look who's in here. There you are. You haven't just come. But it's exceedingly dangerous to traverse the coast this time of day. And this one's actually alive. It's William Burroughs, author of Naked Lunch. I'm so glad you came. I find that the pleasant company of my relations calms my nerves. It doesn't calm my nerves because you're all very strange looking. Careful. I use a special thinner. The fumes can do all sort of damage to you. Mm -hmm. The painter I knew fairly went mad from it. So, actually, you decided to use it. Poor soul. He scratched out his own eyes in a fit of frenzy. His own eyes! You don't say. Thanks for, thanks for the story. That's great. You be careful Just with that there. Did you keep the windows open? Oh, I will. Yeah, it's the right. best time of mine. By keeping my mind occupied, I attempt to dispel some of the constitutional agitation which affects me. Yes. Well, you're very good. That's a good painting. I have a surprise. Your brother Henry is here. He's upstairs visiting with the least even now. Oh. What a nice surprise.
what a delightful time that was. Cousin, you've come. Oh, we're so happy. Well, dear brother, delighted to see you. Please, join us. Hmm. Ooh, wine. Can I have some? Henry has just been relating his adventures to me. He's been everywhere. Yes, yes. Mind if I play some piano? You play so beautifully. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, please, please, you're too kind. But my travels are over. I'm ready to settle down. I have little clay kids. I know what you mean. How did you find Uncle Edwin? He was We're worried about right him. Right downstairs. He's consumed by his paintings. He, he's only painted like one. Are you unwell? You look a little peaked. Peaked? Oh, I'm dead. Your bench man's here. Guys, where did you go? Guys? Uh. <laughs> mm. Mm, it must be that paint thinner. I knew I shouldn't have sniffed it. This is in my room. It's very drafty. It was many and many a year ago when a kingdom by the sea, the maiden there lived, whom you may know, by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child. Very attractive. In this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love. I and my Annabel Lee. With the love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in the kingdom by the sea, the wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee, so that her high born kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher. I have in the key to your heart, Annabel Lee. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But you should have dressed far more warmly. Far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above, nor the demons down under the sea, if ever discover my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. You gotta get and over her. all the night died, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride. In the sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. Yeah, yeah. See? She suffered from drafts because there was no wall on her head. Poor old Annabelle Lee. 